Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Malwarebytes Premium version 4.5. This is the latest version of their anti-malware solution. And as you all know, this is no longer like a second opinion scanner. This is the primary line of defense with proactive protection. So we will be testing it as such. And if we go into settings, you'll notice that there are some interesting security features. So we've got brute force protection, exploit protection, which we will be testing specifically later on. And there's setting in here for blocking pen testing attacks. So we will be trying this out, testing specific MITRE techniques and seeing if the product is able to block them. So that's gonna be like our ultimate zero day test, but you'll have to wait until the end of this video for that. So make sure you watch this till the end. To start off though, we're going to keep things simple and we're going to do our very standard Malix test. So we're going to run about three to 400 different samples collected within the last 24 hours just to give you a good idea of the detection ratio and how the product works. Everything is set up and ready to go. We've got task manager on the top left, so you can see the CPU usage the whole time. So without further ado, let the testing begin. Everything seems to be working correctly. So as you can see, Malwarebytes is detecting and blocking these threats as they're being executed. So far we have a proactive detection of 100%, but of course you don't wanna be staring at this all day, so let's speed it up, shall we? The test is finally complete and it took about 35 minutes, so that's a while. We did have a few misses, but the overall proactive detection was 95.09%, which is really good. So a total of 19 misses, and from what I saw, most of them looked like either FPs or PUPs. But now we're going to restart the system and do a brief forensic analysis to see if there are any IOCs on the system or any major threats that it missed. All right, so after doing some analysis post restart, it seems like nothing was really missed other than maybe a couple of DLL files. Now, 
there are some additional programs that we noticed on the system, but those are likely just tools that were falsely flagged to begin with. So pretty much a clean sheet here. Since these are located in the temp folder, I'm not really going to count them as a miss because they're not currently active. They're not running process. So they're likely just traces of applications. But just to be sure, we have saved the DLL files for further analysis. So that concludes the first part of the test. So we've got a pretty good proactive detection overall. In the next part of the test, we're going to be looking at zero day protection. Specifically, if Malwarebytes is able to protect against certain attack techniques, regardless of whether or not they're in their signatures. And in order to do that, we have our specific malic scripts that are coded by us based on the MITRE attack framework. So to start off, we're gonna do a simple ransomware test. And this is going to simulate some behaviors that would be characteristic of ransomware. So for example, I'm gonna to try to set up a DNS communication with a command and control server that was blocked apparently. I'm gonna to try to delete shadow copies using VSS admin and encrypt the data. And once this is over, it's going to tell us if the attack was blocked and if so, at which stage. So the results are in. As you can see, the attack was blocked at stage one. So we weren't able to set up the command and control communication. And the overall block rate is 60%. Now I wanna be clear, this is not a test where I expect a block rate of 100% because there are certain behaviors that would not be malicious in a certain context. So what we really wanna see is whether or not the entire attack chain is blocked or allowed to continue. And in this case, it was blocked at stage one. Now we're gonna do a bit more of a sophisticated ransomware test and see how that fares. So here we go, Geronimo, we're gonna clear the event logs, use some privilege escalation techniques. And once again, we've got an alert from Malwarebytes saying exploit was blocked. We're gonna set up a hidden user. This is a typical ransomware tactic. So they create a new user account and try to give it administrator privileges, bypass UAC and set up a scheduled task for the encryption payload. That's what we're trying to do here. And then we're trying to do the same stuff. So we're trying to set up C2 communication, deleting shadow copies and encrypting data. And in this case, the attack was blocked at stage two with an overall block rate of 58.8%. Another thing to keep in mind is the block rate is based on a scoring metric we've developed for each of these actions. So they're not equally weighted. And that's based on how malicious we consider a particular action. So these two statistics, combined is designed to give you an idea of how likely the product would be to block a similar attack. So Malwarebyte seems to have done well against the ransomware attacks, but we're gonna try a slightly different attack now, which is Trojan delivery. So this is how a typical payload would be delivered on your system. We're gonna try some fallless techniques and it seems like that has passed. We're gonna try some privilege escalation, and it seems that's when Malwarebytes really kicks in and thinks this is malware and starts terminating it. We're also creating a firewall exception, doing some C2 communication, adding a startup entry. And this time the attack was blocked at stage two with an overall block rate of 55%. Another thing I wanted to mention, the way Malwarebytes works by default, it terminates the entire process chain when it detects an exploit. So in any of these cases, the moment it notices one of these behaviors to be suspicious, it would just terminate the entire program. Now Malix is designed to get around that. So the way we do that is we've designed the behaviors to be very modular. So we're using entirely different files to simulate different behaviors. That's why Malwarebytes is not stopping the test from running entirely. But that is the reason why we have the attack blocked at stage. If this were one program, what would actually happen is the test would just stop at stage two and would not proceed from there. But we have engineered Malix to work around that because we also want to measure the overall block rate. So that's just something to know. And now we're gonna run our final test, which is gonna be for rootkit embedding. Another cool thing to notice is during a lot of these tests, the alerts that I see pop up from Malwarebytes, like you can see there's a APT behavior protection. So APT stands for Advanced Persistent Threat. And the protection technique says T1059 execution. So this is actually the specific MITRE tactic that corresponds to the techniques we're using. So that's nice to see that there is that correlation there. Seems like the rootkit embedding was also blocked successfully. We have a slightly higher block rate for this one at 63.64%. A lot of these behaviors seem to be blocked, especially the defense evasion ones. In a realistic scenario, again, the attack would be blocked at stage two. 
that concludes our zero day test. I think it's very interesting to see that Malwarebytes was able to block some of these behaviors. Keep in mind though, in order to do that, you're going to have the setting for blocking pen testing attacks turned on over here. So unless this thing is turned on, it's not gonna block these behaviors. So if you are a user, I would recommend turning this on because it will seriously bolster your protection against zero day attacks. And we will be including these tests in future videos on TPSC. So you'll see a lot more products tested this way. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. My final thoughts on Malwarebytes are quite interesting. So this product has definitely come a long way since the 4.0 days when it was pretty ineffective. They've made a lot of improvements to the core defenses, which is something I like to see. There's still some issues though. So for example, it is still susceptible to attacks from shared folders and network locations, but at least it's moving in the right direction. And if you watch the recent tier list video, I did put it in tier A along with some other good products. So it's definitely a good product to consider. A few other things that I like about it is the general GUI. It's very simple, you can turn off individual components from the home screen. For those of you who don't like a very intrusive and overbearing AV, I think Malwarebytes is a good option. And we will be doing some follow-up tests in a couple of months and doing a typical ransomware test with our entire ransomware set. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. If you want to do a cybersecurity audit of your business or use some of our tests, feel free to reach out at tpsc.tech. We do offer business services. And for everyone else, here's a bit of a surprise. We are actually planning on releasing a public version of Malix in the next six months. So Stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.